I ended up listening to all of Carice's lecture at ATF. After the two time travel theories she introduced at the beginning, she explained the rest with equal eloquence. She seemed a little nervous at first, but that quickly changed as she spoke. By the end, it was an impressive lecture, so impressive that you wouldn't think it was an 18-year-old's first time. She did well to respond to my malicious questions with sarcasm. She's got guts. Wait, why am I praising her? Leaving that aside... I saw Makise Kurisu dead, and yet she is alive. My memories don't mesh with reality. Not just about Kurisu, my conversations with Daru and Mayuri didn't make sense either. Everything would be solved if I just told myself that what I saw was a dream, an illusion. It never happened. But never say never. This leaves me with no choice. After parting ways with Daru at ATF, I head to Yanabayashi Shrine. I need to get exercise. I seriously doubt that the Makise Kurisu at ATF was a ghost. Regardless, it's natural to seek an exorcism after such an experience. I'm Japanese. It's in our blood. Yanabayashi Shrine is located on the other side of Kanda River. To find it, enter the first side road after crossing Masebashi Bridge. It's a very small shrine that doesn't fit with the surrounding multi-tenant buildings. Kanda Myojin is the more famous shrine in Akiba, but I deliberately chose this one. The shrine is so small, you could easily miss it if you weren't looking. Regardless, I can hear the chirping of cicadas from the few trees growing here. Right there, loud. What, what are you doing here? There are two girls standing in front of the main building. One of them is Mayuri. The other is a docile looking beauty in traditional Miko attire. Urushibara Luka, a stunning example of feminine charm and grace. So, tips list. Uh, shrine maidens, priestesses in the Shinto religion, Maiko Tip... Every you know what's really bad is I don't remember if it's Maiko or Miko. Typically the I sounds like E, so I'm gonna go with Miko. Miko typically dress in a white kimono with a red hakama or sh skirt. The role is to assist priests with performing rituals and events. Lips delicate like cherry blossoms in bloom. The essence of Japanese beauty. The chief priest's son. That's right, son. Lovely in every way. But he's a guy. Good afternoon, Okabe-san. He bows his head. The voice of a girl. The mannerisms of a girl. More feminine than any girl I know. But he's a guy. Taller than Yuri, yet oh so slender. But he's a guy. Looks stunning in Miko robes. And he's a guy. Do you have something you need to say, Okabe? Are you trying to defend your point? Holding a bamboo broom. Apparently in the middle of cleaning. That has nothing to do with... But he's a guy. <laughs> it's almost evening, yet still hot as hell outside. Oh my... But he's a guy. <laughs> Dan Cicadas won't shut up. But he's a guy. Really? Are we gonna- How long is this going on for? Lukako. Lukako. The blade I gave you. What happened to it? He's a friend of mine. I call him Lukako. 
We met when I rescued him from some aggressive photographers in Akiba's pedestrian, pedestrian heaven. Some neighborhoods of Tokyo, such as Akihabara, close major streets on busy shopping days. This effectively turns the street into one big crosswalk, facilitating pedestrian access. It also so happens that Lukako and Mariori are classmates. I learned that fact after I'd gotten to know him. Lukako is taken back by my sharp question. He starts fidgeting with a flushed face and tears in his eyes. <laughs> Um, you mean Demon Sword Samirai? So Correct. I bought it for you so you could learn to control your power. Ah <laughs> Oh yeah, you bought it at Blade Works, right? I think you said it cost nine hundred and eighty don't say another word anymore and they will come to silence you. They're gonna silence me? Thanks for worrying about me, Okurin. But who are they? I ignore Mayuri's question. So, oh, Lukako, are you making sure to practice with Samidare like I told you? Yes, I do practice swings once a day. As long as you carry it and master the Senshin Zanma school of swords swordsmanship, you can prevent the dark flame inside you from consuming your soul. Demon Sword Samedare may be an imitation sword, that is only the form it takes to hide from the world. When one worthy to wield it appears, it unleashes its true power, and it is on sale for only 980 yen, tax included. <laughs> Thank you, Okabe-san. It was a wonderful present. My name is an Okabe. It's Okarin! I'm so sorry, Kyoma-san. He's dragged other people into his lunacy. <laughs> as long as you understand, now speak the words. No, not Konglo. Konglu. Lukako smiles happily as I nod. Thank you. Such a lovely smile. But he's a guy. Are you trying to say that so that we... I don't... Such a beautiful master-disciple relationship. Mayushi's not a Fujoshi, but she's getting a little excited. Okay, Blade Works. One of the several stores in Akihabara that sell replica sword or replica weapons. Items include Japanese Sengoku period swords, European Middle Age swords, and knight armor. Fujoshi, a term for female otaku with a term for female otaku with a particular interest in yaoi or works of fiction that depict homosexual relationships between men, does not apply to female otaku in general. It is a very important point of uh, 
difference. A lot of people use Fujoshi for just girls who like anime, and that is not that is not the term you use. Jeez. Though we do have a master disciple relationship, I, Hyo and Kyoma, have gone to great lengths to brainwash, er, I mean teach, Lukako about the evil conspiracies that rule the world and how to resist them. That stuff about Demon Sword Samadere is part of that training. Looks aside, Lukako is very obedient and hardworking. Plus, he's always eager to learn new things. A master couldn't ask for a better disciple. Though he does have a weakness of not catching on too quickly and being too shy. What are you doing here, Mayuri? I came to see Lukako-kun! Coming us, coming up next month, and I want him to cosplay as Kirai-chan from Rhymet, but he won't say yes. Cosplay? That's just too embarrassing for me. But I'm sure you'll look great in it. The phrase, someone this cute can't be a girl, is really popular, you know? Come on, make your cosplay debut! Mayuri's hobby is making costumes. She's made at least 30 so far, but it's rare for her to wear one herself. Tips. Kamima. <clears throat> Comic Giga Market. A massive otaku event held twice a year at the Tokyo Big Site. Every Kamima, thousands of artists gather to sell their creations, which range from erotic manga based on popular anime to original figurines, music, and games. The next Kamima will be held on August 15th. Karari-chan. The heroine of Rainet Kakaru. Her full name is Nishimura Kirari. She's also a smart and athletic girl in the fifth grade. She's also cute and has a good personality. Basically, the perfect girl. Passionate about fashion, hates mushrooms. Someone this cute can't be a girl. It's an unwritten rule to use this phrase whenever you see someone who looks like a cute girl but is either of unspecified gender or actually a boy. This expression is also used sarcastically with boyish looking girls. Well, that's rude. Instead, she seems to get her kicks from seeing other people wear them. And it looks like she's chosen Lukako as her next target. Naturally, the costume Mariori is currently raving about is for a female character. Normally, I would understand why a man wouldn't want to dress like a girl, but come on! Lukako has no problem wearing Miko robes. Why should cosplay be any different? But whatever, I have business to take care of. Save the trivial stuff for later. And it's trivial to me. Anyway, Lukako, there's a good reason for my being here today. I need you to perform an exorcism. No, it's nothing that serious. I just need some peace of mind. That's why I came here instead of Kanda Shrine. So with that said, bring out the usual. Um, um the usual. You mean Samidare? No, who the hell uses a demon sword for an exorcism? The usual for an exorcism should be obvious. 
あん正式な名称は分からんが棒に白い髪がふさふさとついていて彼氏がわさわさと振り合った I don't know what it's called, but it's that stick with the zigzaggy paper thingies that the priest does with a shaky thingy with. That <laughs> <laughs> sounded really dumb, Okanin. Quite a shock to hear that from Mayuri. Oh, no, this is me. Oh, no, sir. But I don't know if my father will lend it to me. Just to keep the key back. I'll go ask him. Lukaku makes a quick bow, then runs off to his house, which is the shrine grounds. Meanwhile, Mayuri takes out her pocket watch out of her bag to check the time. It's a very old watch, not the sort you'd expect a high school girl to carry. That is. That is an elaborate watch. Its name is Pockety. Obviously, that's the name Mayuri gave it, not its brand name or anything. Ever since elementary school, Mayuri has carried Pockety with her everywhere. It's her most important treasure. Well, it's time for me to go to work. Do your best. You're going straight home afterwards? Ah, yep. Mayuri lives in Ikibukuro. She goes to Akiba by train just about every day. It should be obvious since we're childhood friends and all, but I live in Ikibukuro too. Though I've been staying at the lab since summer break began. See you tomorrow! I call Mayuri to stop before she drops off. Mayuri. Wait, Mayuri. Back at Radikan, you heard a man scream, right? Scream? Mayuri blinks several times and puts a finger to her temple as if in thought. Then she gives her usual smile. When was that again? Today. This afternoon. I don't think I heard anything. So Oh. Well, all right. Okay, then it's a weirdo. Bye bye. Mayuri leaves, this time for good, though she pauses to wave at least a half dozen times before disappearing beyond the archway. Thanks for waiting, Okabe-san. Lukaku returns shortly after Mayuri leaves. In his hands was the white zigzaggy thing that I asked for. Dad, let me borrow it. Thank goodness. Um, did Mayuri chan leave? Mayuri wa doodemo ii kara. Ima sugu o harai o hajimeru no da, Lukaku ga. Don't worry about Mayuri. Begin the exorcism at once, Lukaku. Ah, hai. Boku de iin de shou ka? Somo somo, nani ni tai suru o harai o? Um, okay. But do you really want me to do it? What exactly am I exercising anyway? Lukaku is flustered. Is it really up to this? I'm beginning to doubt. I should have known better. The instant doubt touches my heart, and a terrible chill shoots up my spine. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Why is he doing this? He really is a chuni. Yeah, it's the evil spirit in my arm. I grab my violently shaking wrist. <laughs> Oh. He has no shame. Be still, foul spirit. Uh, hurry, Lukaku. It's trying to take over. 
しっかりしてください。No way. Please hang in there, Okabe-san. 俺は Okabe-san ではない。I'm not Okabe-san. すいません、京馬さん。でも僕、どうしたら I'm, ?I'm sorry, 京馬さん。あ、but what should I? お払いを、急げ。<笑>この前教えた通りにやればいい。エクセスのハリー、ジストゥエット、like I told you。はい、OK。With a serious look on his face, Lukaku grabs the Onu Seth with both hands as if it were a sword. His stance is impressive. I taught him well. His face is red and he can barely talk. Looks like he wants to say something, but is hesitating. Panicking because he feels awkward? Amateur. Please, Luca, expel this spirit from me. I don't want to kill you. Ah. Lukaku starts crying. Looks like he's really worried. Reason tells me he's a guy, but his lovely appearance makes me feel guilty. Like I made a frail girl cry. But despite the tears welling up in his eyes, it looks like Lukaku has managed to work up his resolve. Hear me, evil spirit. He raises the Onusa up high, shaking it left and right. Okabe, don't go. Please, please, stay. Please, please, I'm okay. I mean, Kyoma, son. Oh, easy. This time, I'll hold you. That's great. Now strike my arm with the zigzags. The tip of the onusa touches my upper arm. In an anime, this would be the cue for some dramatic shockwave to occur, but nothing like that happens. The only sound is the chirping of cicadas. <coughs> did, did it work? I took a deep breath. The trembling in my arm has stopped. It's okay. I'm okay. Looks like you drove away the evil spirit. Good job, Lukaku. Lukaku sighs of relief and blushes. I'm glad I was able to help. His shy smile really does make him look like a girl. He is crazy. However, since we did like a nice scene tra transition here, I feel like this is a good place to stop. My voice is also really hurting for some reason. I don't know. I think it's because I'm trying to record like six different games at the same time, and it's, it's so it's taken its toll. But anyways, thank you guys so much for enjoying this episode with me. I'm really excited to play more Steins Gate, and I would love to record another episode right now, but I really have to rest my voice. So I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.